Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about how the community has changed since the quarterling Unsleeve Media, or just Jeremy, has left Magic the Gathering. He posted a video and he's now gone. Uh, he decided to leave after maybe two years or a year and a half of being banned for life. Uh, the first thing he did after being banned for life was hold a Magic tournament. And it was called the Band Tournament or something like that. And it looked like a fun event. He held it at the bar in GP Indy, I believe. When we still had GPs. Now, the person at the heart of the reason that he was banned, Christine Sprankles, is now returning to Magic. And she's now posting about Magic again. Which I think is a positive thing. But we do have to look at the overall effects of Jeremy's time doing Magic the Gathering at Unsleeved Media and the Quarterling. It is definitely a fascinating drama llama experience because I can see it both ways. I can see it, okay, it does seem like he is going over the edge. And I could also see it from his perspective where, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not going to get into it because I'm acting and behaving as well as I can so I can whale on my MTG Arena account. And again, whale is not an offensive word for uh, overweight people. Whale is just a terminology used to describe people who spend money. I'm trying to give you money, Magic the Gathering, so do not ban my whale account, please. So now a bunch of people come out and they feel like it's safer. Um, some people have said... It's safer now that Jeremy's gone and Jeremy is not going to threaten us anymore with his videos. Uh, this was the original uh, Polygon article and it does not paint Jeremy in a very good light. Uh, the Kotaku article, I believe, was also very negative on Jeremy's side. It paints Brian Lewis, who is known as the professor, in a very good light. Although his video is also questionable because he compares what Jeremy's doing, or he mentions uh, the persecution of Jews in World War II in his video. So that's a little surprising, kind of came out of the blue. But yeah, it, on, it happened and you cannot take it back, so... I don't know, it sounds like, it just sounds like a lot of things that don't make sense to me one thing is is jeremy really like so so bad for magic that people felt unsafe people were actually you know reporting that uh, they were getting death threats and emails and isn't that the internet like couldn't you send me a death threat right now on my email address and i would be like i wouldn't make a video about it i would just be like oh okay spam Another death threat. Okay, cool. So Christine is coming back to the community. And it didn't take her that long. She had quit. A lot of people say that I'm quitting for good and they come straight back. I feel like that's kind of not truthful. Um, because when it's like going out of business and then you go back to the store two months from now and it's not out of business. You do feel like, okay, I bought that rug from that store. And I thought it was the best deal they could do, but clearly it's not. And clearly, five years later, this rug store is still going out of business. It must be a long inventory cycle. Um, but a lot of really interesting stuff came out uh, later, um, after Christine had quit and after Jeremy had quit. Or Jeremy was banned for life and he couldn't go to pre-release. He couldn't go to uh, Friday Night Magic. He couldn't play on his Magic Online account, uh, which he got refunded. Uh, and some of this stuff you guys will never know about. It's kind of inside stuff and I don't know if I should say it. Essentially, I'll summarize it this way. We in the Magic community are not angels. We are devils. And the more stuff that you post out there, the more pictures, the more things that on Facebook groups, be that private or not, 
I don't know, Pojo forums, just throwing that out there. Uh, the more likely that you said something against Magic in anger. Uh, Andrew Yanyuk is a good example. He owns a $100 million company. He could care less about Magic the Gathering now, but when he was a young teenager, he said some pretty, he burnt all the bridges. Or did he? So if Christine can come back to Magic, I think Jeremy can come back to Magic too. He just has to give it a little bit of time. I don't think you can ever really leave Magic. And that's what Christine found out. Especially if you were at one time a popular figure in Magic, it's hard to leave. Um, it really is difficult to leave. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy about my Pokemon channel is no one really knows who I am. And there's not that you know hatred or the evil, the nasty comments. And I can just enjoy opening Pokemon packs and that's that. Because like, how much controversy can a Pokemon pack possibly you know, have? Um, harassment is definitely an issue. Uh, Owen got hit on this recently. Uh, whether or not he ha there's concrete evidence against Owen, the accusations are enough for him to be removed from his dream job that he's been working really hard at for 20 years. And no one came out to defend him, which makes it look bad. And I know a lot of you say that he has a right to be silent. He has a right to be silent. Yes. If this was a criminal court uh, case or if this was a civil case, which it is not, he has that absolute right. And you should. You should exercise your right. That is part of the Constitution. It is in the amendment. Is it an amendment or just in the Constitution? But regardless, you have the right to remain silent. However, in the public opinion, you don't have that right. So the public opinion, it's everyone, let's grab a fork and let's go to the castle. And if the, zamp the vampire or Count Dracula cannot convince the villagers that he's not a vampire, they're going to burn down the castle. There was no trial. There was no right to silence. The castle is getting burnt down and all the villagers are going to die because they're not as strong as vampires. So that's what's happening to Owen is I'm surprised because it's not a civil case. It's not the criminal case that he has to worry about. It's the court of public opinion and the court of public opinion. You do need to go out there and, and kind of say something to offset what people are saying. I just find it kind of funny that this like on the quarterling is now like a dangerous individual. And now because he's gone. Like, he's officially gone. Banning him for life wasn't enough. He had to make a goodbye video. And then suddenly all these people coming back to the community is uh, all these content creators. Like, it's kind of hilarious. Like, how dangerous was this guy? Like, how dangerous was Jeremy to, like, a cosplayer who he has never met in person or even talked to? I don't know. I And honestly, I think for Christine, I think it's better for her not to be part like for her own sake because there are a million Jeremy's out there there are millions of Jeremy's white males who play magic and of course somebody will carry the mantle because they realize that Jeremy had one of the biggest YouTube channels at the time and one of the ways to become very popular as a content creator is to do what other popular YouTube if that's box opening, then you open your boxes. If that's MTG Arena, which I'm doing right now, then that's MTG Arena. I didn't come out of the blue and think, mm, MTG Arena, let's do some of that stuff. No, no, I, I'm i going to do that because A, it's easy to record the videos, and B, you know, it, again, I'm lazy, and it's good content. It's heavily watched content, I should say. And plus, it's like mobile games. So if I ever had changed my channel to a mobile game channel, I can slowly integrate my other mobile games. So, in conclusion, was the Quarterling actually a uh, dangerous individual for our community? It seems like everyone thinks he is, which is appalling to me because he never put anyone in physical danger, like has been accused of AJ and Owen and Frank and other people. And he's never done anything that I would classify as creepy or just out there or bad for the brand. The guy was so happy to have two uncommon cards to spoil. And then he goes on Reddit and finds out that everyone on Reddit hates him. 
and the person who gave him the two cards is now back pedaling so hard that he's calling out a customer for being toxic. And this is where everything kind of spirals out of control. You can pinpoint it to that one exact moment uh, in time. I like Christine Sprankles. I've never met her. I've never talked to her, but my videos have always been pro-Christine. Uh, even the videos on Jeremy. And I'm glad she is returning, but perhaps for her own sanity and her own sake, she should not. Because for every Jeremy that goes down, there's a million Jeremys left. That's just the game of magic. Bye, guys.